now let's talk about the algorithm for multiplication. So when I'm multiplying two numbers, I'm going to arbitrarily refer to one of them as the multiplicand and the other as the multiplier. You can, of course, flip both of these numbers as well. And let's start by revisiting the basic multiplication steps that you might have learned in grade school. So let me just take an arbitrary example. 56 times 43. Right? The way you do it is you take this first bit down here, and that's that, that digit is a 3. So I do 3 times 56, right, which is 168. And then I leave this place blank, and I'm kind of basically shifting the next answer to the left. And that's because I'm taking 4, which is in the tens place, and I'm going to multiply that by 56, right? So that's equivalent to multiplying 40 by 56, right? So it's kind of like saying that I just add a 0 here, and then do 4 times 56, which is 224. And then you add both of these up, and gives you 8... 0, 1, 4, 2, right? So that's the answer of 56 times 43. So now on the left, I'm going through another example. And you'll notice that, you know, what I've really done is used decimal numbers 1000 and 1001. Okay, but I've very carefully chosen these, uh, these numbers so that they only have zeros and ones. So I'm going to go through exactly the same algorithm again over here on the left, but you'll essentially see it being applied to numbers that only involve ones and zeros. So that same algorithm is now being applied to a set of binary numbers. Okay, so let's go through the same steps. I first start with the least significant digit down here, which is a 1. So I'm multiplying 1 by 1000, and I write that down over here. I shift this next number to the left by 1. Right, so that's me putting a 0 over here, just like I put a 0 down on, on this uh, multiplication on the right. And then I take the next digit, which is a 0, multiply that by 1000. Now I have to shift one more place to the left, which is essentially putting two zeros here. Then looking at this next digit, 0 times 1000, again gives me a 0. Again shift one place to the left, which is like putting three zeros down here. And then taking the last bit 1, multiplying it by 1000, that result is 1000. Now I add these up, and that gives me the final product, which is uh, this large number over here. Okay, so this is essentially the algorithm that is also going to be used for multiplication in binary. Okay, so in every step, the multiplicand, which is this one over here, is shifted to the left. All right, and depending on whether the next bit of the multiplier is a 1 or a 0, either that value gets copied down here, or a set of zeros gets copied down over here. Okay, so that gives us this algorithm that I'm showing you on, on the next slide. So before I go into this algorithm, let me just point out that if I take a 32-bit multiplier and multiply it by a 32-bit multiplicand, the result should be a 64-bit product. Right? Just like over here, when I multiplied two 2-bit two numbers, I got a 4-bit number. Okay, so exactly the same way, if I'm multiplying two 32-bit registers, the expected result will be a 64-bit product. So the result has to be placed in a 64-bit register. And so you'll see that the ALU that I'm using, the ALUs that finally do this addition, there's an addition that's being performed over here, that addition has to be performed by a 64-bit ALU. Okay, and I start by placing the multiplicand, right? So the multiplicand is this number up here. This is the number that gets copied down here. And with every single step, it keeps shifting to the left, right? So that number gets placed in the lower 32 bits over here. So this is the original multiplicand. And with every single step, right, there'll be 32 steps in this case. What I had over here was just two four-bit numbers. And so it took only four steps to finish, to finish this entire operation. But if I have a 32-bit number, it's going to take me 32 steps. And in those 32 steps, this multiplicand is going to keep shifting to the left. So in the very last step, it's basically going to be multiplicand followed by 32 zeros. Okay, so this multiplicand, which may have been shifted to the left, is fed as one of the inputs to this 64-bit ALU. So with every step, I'm basically accumulating that sum. So after the first step, I'm going to have added this to the sum. After the next step, I would have added this to the sum. After the next step, this gets added and so on, right? So with each step, I'm basically accumulating this next value over here, okay? So one of the inputs that ALU is the multiplicand shifted, and the other input is basically my running sum, right? Whatever I've added in so far. Once I've taken this, this product or the sum from the previous step, 
and I've added it to the multiplicand shifted to the left, that result, should I be using it to update this register or not? That's the question before me, right? And so in some cases, I do want to take the multiplicand shifted to the left, but in some cases, I just want to add a zero. That is, I want to leave the sum as it was. Okay, so that decision is based on the corresponding bit in that multiplier, right? So the multiplier is kind of placed over here and it keeps shifting to the right because, you know, what I'm doing is looking at the least significant bit of the multiplier, then looking at the next bit, then looking at the next bit and so on. So you place this value in the multiplier register, examine the least significant bit, and then shift it to the right. And depending on whether that least significant bit was a one or a zero, you add the sum and write it in here or you just ignore that sum.